Hello, I'm Brian Fitzgerald, the Golf Doctor, and today we're going to look at common bunker mistakes. There's a lot of them. I've done a video on this before, and this is my uh, second video with a similar title. So uh, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out that other video. Lots of people have bunker problems, and as I've often said before, if you have bunker problems, two strategies. One, avoid them like the plague. Do whatever you can to not be in bunkers, even if it means going sideways. It's better to do that than to waste shots by taking three and four to get out. So that's the first thing. Second thing is get better at them. Practice them. Practice bunker shots more than any other shot if that's your, your issue. And if you can do that, you'll find you'll get much better results. Okay, so the first common mistake people have with bunker shots is they purchase a set of golf clubs and the set of clubs has a sand wedge or a lob wedge in them and they just get what comes with the set. Now some people are lucky and they luck in that the, the, the sand wedge or the lob wedge that they have is perfect for their sand. More commonly it'll have the wrong bounce so I would suggest you get fitted when you purchase a set of golf clubs. You should always do that no matter what your skill level. And part of the fitting process is to match up the bounce angle on your lob wedge or your sand wedge to what you need in the, on the course that you play. So just as a rule of thumb, if you play golf with thick sand and lots of it, you need more bounce on the sand wedge. The bounce stops the leading edge from digging in. So it enables you to hit a shot where the club leading edge doesn't dig in and you hit it fat all the time. It just stops that digging in process. If you play golf on courses like this, which is very firm packed, it's a bit damp at the moment as well, so it's even firmer, with not much sand, you need a sand wedge or a lob wedge with lower bounce. So that's the first common mistake. Don't just settle for the sand wedge or lob wedge that comes with your set really make sure that you get one that suits you and suits the course that you play. When I played on tour, I used to carry three different wedges, all the same brand, but they had different bounce angles. And back then, no one knew what bounce angles was. I didn't even know what it was, but I knew what I had was wrong, so I spent a lot of time on a grinder and a grinding wheel making basically a low bounce. So I had three different bounces that I could adapt to wherever I was playing. So uh, nowadays, they all come with a number on the bottom. So this particular one is a 60 degree, six degree bounce, which is perfect for the situation we're in here with firm, packed, very fine sand. The second common bunker mistake is people, for whatever reason, always open the club face when they're in the bunker. They see it happen on TV. Always open the club face, the commentators say. Well, I don't agree with that. Open the club face if you know what opening the club face is going to do to assist you in the shot. So we just spoke about having the right bounce angle. If I had a 12 degree bounce lob wedge of firm sand, we already know that my leading edge is going to be higher off the ground than what it would be or what it should be. As soon as I open the, the club face, I'm in fact increasing the bounce. So if I sit that on my hand and as soon as I open the club face, that leading edge gets raised. So if you've got too much bounce on your club already and you're in a firm packed sand and you open the club face, you're effectively making it a 16 to 18 degree bounce club. There is no way you're going to get this ball out in that circumstance. So be very careful about opening and cl at the club face. I would actually encourage a lot of people to close the club face in certain circumstances. It just depends on the shot that you're playing. But it, I carry a, uh, a six degree uh, bounce sand wedge, as I said before, or lob wedge. If I was in a bunker here and someone had raked it and I felt that it was really thick, I would definitely open the club face in that circumstance because it's thicker than the rest of the bunkers. I don't want this club to dig in much. So I find it very useful to be able to open. But how do we know what to do? Get in the bunkers and try and practice our bunker shots. It's so critical that you practice. Practice opening, practice closing, practice keeping it square. Put yourself in different situations. It's better to do that than go and hit uh, 157 irons 
at the same flag on the range. This is really where your score gets better by doing this sort of stuff, particularly if you've got problems with bunkers. Okay, the next common bunker mistake I see people make is they think that, oh, I've got to get a V-shaped swing, I've got to get down steeply, because the only way I can get this ball out is if I get a steep angle of attack. If I hit down on it, the ball's got to come up. Maybe. Most bunker shots benefit from having a wider, shallow angle of attack. There are very few circumstances in a bunker shot where you do want to come down steep. Uh, so for the majority of bunker shots, we want it shallow. And we want to think more about a U-shaped swing than a V-shaped swing. So think about a driver. Do you want to do that? No. We want to get the driver nice and wide. So as you're swinging in the bunker, you want to think about having the widest type swing. Don't go ridiculous. Your hands need to just release a little bit or relax a little bit, I should say, not release. They release through the shot. But going back, they just relax. So it's not being wristy. It's not setting. It's just a relaxation and the hand will tend to just hinge by itself. So if we can keep that angle of attack quite shallow, the loft of the club is going to do all the work for you. So we'll see how we go. There's not a lot of green to work with, and this is a pretty steep lip in front of me. Nice shallow angle of attack. And if you look down there, the ball, uh, sorry, there's not much sand being taken. It is really firm there. If I had have had that open club face, I would have been in all sorts of trouble there. And that ball's gone up to about four or five feet, something like that. So uh, that enabled me to get the best result I possibly could. If I start coming down steep on it, in this bunker with it being this firm, I'm gonna hit behind it, the club's gonna bounce, and I'm gonna blade it into the face, or I might hit it over the back into the clubhouse. So not a good thing. So the next common bunker mistake I see people make is they're really trying to get the ball out, particularly here where it's a fairly steep lip, and they think, gee, I've got to get the ball up in the air. So people tend to, on the downswing, fall back, trying to feel like I'm going to hit on the up. If you're playing tennis and you want to hit a top spin lob, you're probably going to fall back to hit up. It makes it easier to do it. So it's logical that you would do that when you play golf. It just doesn't work. So what we really want to do when we're doing this, it's the loft of the club that's going to get the ball up. It's not what we do with our body. So there's no point falling backwards. What's going to happen if we do that is instead of hitting somewhere just behind the ball, we're going to hit a lot further to the right and we're either going to bounce the club into the, about the equator of the golf ball and blade it into the face or we'll hit it too far. We need to keep our momentum going. So one of the best drills that you can do to practice this is just to get a sand bucket from a golf club. They're everywhere. Don't steal it, just borrow it for, for your training. And just put your right foot in that bucket and just practice hitting a shot, trying to feel that your bucket is on the base. So it'll feel strange at first, but if you do that, there's no way I can get that bucket on the base if I'm falling back to my right. So just the little simple thing of just trying to swing, sit the bucket on its base, and you'll find you'll get a lot better result. This, this is a great drill for all sorts of clubs, but it's a particularly good one for the bunker shot. So uh, just borrow one from your local club, get in a bunker, get out in the course, practice it, have a couple without it, sorry, have a couple of without a ball and just practice what it feels like to do that. So that gets into what I call the K position in your follow through, but it helps you get momentum to get out on the golf course. So the next common mistake I see people make is they don't focus too much on swing tempo and length of swing. Most people that I see playing bunker shots have a swing that's far too short and far too quick. I would much prefer to see a swing that was longer and slower. I'm not talking slow, I'm talking slower, rhythmical. We don't wanna go back really slow and then come down fast. We don't wanna go back fast and then come down slow and decelerate. We wanna accelerate through the shot, but you don't have to rush to achieve that. 
and I always think, where do I want to play my next shot from? It's certainly not the bunker. So if I'm going to err, I'm going to err on the long side and have too long a swing with a slower rhythm than having a swing that is too short and a, and a, a bit of a jabby, stabby type rhythm doesn't work. So longer and slower is better. So as I've said in videos before, I like to think of, particularly in this situation here, is to get the right tempo is think, how am I gonna splash sand out onto the putting surface? So if I just have a couple of practice swings, yeah, just a few grains got out. So it, it's probably about five to six paces where the edge of this uh, bunker starts. So I need to have a slightly longer swing. That's better. More sand came out onto the green that time. So if sand comes out onto the green, it gives us every chance. So as I said, if I'm gonna be wrong, I'm gonna be on the longer side rather than play it and get too cute and leave it in the bunker. So we'll see how I go. So that's certainly just on the longer side, but it's probably about eight feet from the hole. I got it out. Once again, you can see there, it's a firm surface. I've, got all, I've done all the things right. I've chosen the right club. I've got the right amount of bounce. I had good tempo. I made sure I finished with my K position. I did everything I could to get the ball out. So if you've got some other ones, let me know. I'd love to know what, what are your common mistakes. So the, this isn't by all means the definitive list. There's more videos that I can make on the subject. I've made one earlier, so I'll uh, put the link in the description, as I said before. And uh, I'd love to hear what your mistakes are in the bunker. But the best thing you can do for bunker shots is practice them, as I said at the start of the video. Thank you for letting me help you with your golf. I'm Brian Fitzgerald, the Golf Doctor, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.